We've all seen feats of athleticism, feats of strength, and feats of courage in baseball. But what about feats? Okay, feet with personality. Step up, because we're about to celebrate the fanciest footwear, the craziest kicks, and the coolest cleats in the game. Next on Inside Stitch. I'm AJ Andrews, and welcome to Inside Stitch, where it's high tops over high strikes every time. On today's show, we'll recap some of the best looks from All-Star Week in Seattle, remember some of the strangest uniforms in Major League history, and revisit Rajay Davis's career with a sneak peek at his on-field attire. First, though, let's lead off at the bottom. The thing about uniforms is that they're, well, uniform. But even when players are wearing the same cap, jersey, and pants, there's still room to show off a little individuality, especially when it comes to the footwear. Trust me, you'll totally love this next feature. See what I did there? When I first signed with Jordan, I think I, the first time I really uh, got to customize some cleats and, uh, you know, just being a, a, a Jordan athlete, you know, it's super cool, it's super special, something you kind of dream of as a kid. Custom cleats came when I earned the rights to wear custom cleats. Uh, if you did something special, you get to have your name on cleats. That's the first customization. Then you get colorways. And then now, thank God, I get my own cleats. I have the Lindor ones. Hopefully many more to come. I've always been a basketball fan, so uh, for me, uh, Jordan shoes and then really cool Nike shoes, uh, they were my favorite. So I wanted those shoes, the basketball shoes, on the field. And I think I reflect a little bit of my uh, uh, my character. I try to have a, a shoe colorway for every uniform colorway that we have. They've kind of challenged me a little bit. These ones I did for our black unis. I have these for our road unis. Um, I wore these for the WBC as well. I was kind of lazy and procrastinated and didn't get around to ordering some red, white, and blue ones. Um, so just had to match the gray with, with what I could. I think style, it's, it's a very complicated thing because you got some guys who are flashy and some guys who are tastefully stylish. And I think we got those guys in our squad. Clemente ones, I did those last year and I was, it was very special. Clemente, it's someone that gave it all for not just his family, but the people. Well, the native of Puerto Rico launches one here on Clemente Day. Around 2017 or so, Jackie Robinson Day, very subtle, all black. Um, I threw some color in there, some yellow in it, some gold, but real subtle. That was another favorite pair of mine. The first time I, I did the custom cleat thing uh, was for 9-11. Uh, I thought it was a really cool way to, to pay homage to those who were affected. The uh, cleats and designs were awesome, but it was a, more of a special thing. And as my career advanced, um, Nike let me make customs uh, for every year, so I'm really happy that they gave me that option, uh, especially as uh, as a young guy. I did a pair when I was with Pittsburgh for um, Be The Match for our you know charity day, and they had a pair of custom black and gray and white with the yellow accents that had the Be The Match logo and then all these bones all over the shoe, but it looked really tough with our some of my favorites. A lot of the All-Star Game ones were really cool. Um, was specifically 2013 All-Star Game, in uh, New York, I wore some cool like highlighter yellow swing mans. They were really nice, probably a, a cool pair that I got to wear. Just wanted to do something kind of Seattle themed, so Sonic seemed like a good idea. And you know, it's a bright color. They stand out a little bit. But yeah, I think they turned out nice. That's a way to kind of show your personality. And um, so I think uh, without going out and being loud and, and saying, this is who I am, or whatever, you can just kind of wear a certain shoe or, or a glove or a batting glove or whatever and kind of shows who you are. It looks cool to make yourself look, you know, the exact way you want to with the colors and whatnot, but I think it gives everyone a chance to kind of show a little bit of their personality and kind of a little bit of where they come from or some of the things that they're interested in that, you know, the average fan wouldn't be able to know without seeing that on their feet. So I think it's a, a cool little touch. I think it's, a, it's our way to show our, our, our uh, identity, you know, and the, the things that we do off the field, you know the colors that we like, the things that we like to do. We wear a uniform already, so shoes and, and batting glove and, and custom gear is our way to express how we, uh, how we are off the field. Showcasing your shoes is one thing, but when everything else is made up of bold choices, that's when your team could end up on our definitive laundry list of the most, how should I put this, unusual unis of all time.
At number six. How do you turn back the clock when your club played its first games in 1998? Well, if you're the Tampa Bay Rays, you use your imagination. Like with these faux back uniforms, supposedly from 1979. Perhaps drawing inspiration from the Padres uniforms of the early 80s. The disco era font looks far out. And you know, here at Inside Stitch, we can't get enough of those baby blues. At number five. It can get pretty hot out there on the diamond, especially in the summer. So players will do anything they can to keep cool. In 1956 and then again in 2019, the Cincinnati Reds took a vested interest in this problem and gave their jerseys a little extra ventilation by removing the sleeves altogether. And let's face it, there's not a fabric in the world that could contain the bulging biceps of Big Clue. Here's MLB.com Reds beat reporter Mark Sheldon on what made these uniforms so blissfully bizarre. What made them really unusual, especially back in the 50s, is that they had a player named Ted Klazuski who had humongous arms. And instead of wearing sleeves underneath the uniform, he just went with his biceps and it looked really cool. And then when the Reds emulated that in 2019, they had a player, Derek Dietrich, and he also had his arms uh, hulking out of the jersey. There was something about the 1956 look that was both cool and unusual, and it really did stand out over the years in Major League Baseball. I think it's a uniform that just really worked. At number four. We have an ad agency to thank for the memorable Houston Astros jerseys of the mid to late 1970s. The legend tells us that graphic designer Jack Amuni arranged pieces of colored paper into a rainbow of various oranges, yellows, and reds before settling on the specific pattern later referred to as Tequila Sunrise. These beauties hung around through the 1986 season but still re-enter the Astros' orbit from time to time. At number three, the 1998 Mariners were the first team to turn ahead the clock, looking well into the next century with uniforms, partially designed by King Griffey Jr., that featured futuristic fonts, silver batting helmets, and a lack of sleeves. Junior's got those good-looking silver shoes to go with his well-appointed uniform. Seattle's idea was so successful that the rest of the league did their own time traveling forward the next season. At number two, in 1999, several teams went all out, but none committed quite like the Mets, who looked so far into the future that they actually adopted a new home planet. The Mercury Mets, whose roster featured aliens on the Shea Stadium scoreboard, lost 5-1, to one, which brought the team and their uniforms quickly back to Earth. At number one, there's never been a character in baseball quite like Hall of Fame owner Bill Vett whose one-of-a-kind promotional ideas included adding a three-foot, seven-inch player to his roster, creating an exploding scoreboard, and putting shorts on the Chicago White Sox. The definitely not slide-proof look was debuted on August 8, 1976, in a game that saw the Sox, amazingly, steal five bases. In shorts. Seriously. But with only two more on-field appearances, it seems the fashion experiment didn't have any legs. The White Sox have worn many different uniforms over the last several decades, all of which cover everyone's calves. On deck, we have former outfielder Rajay Davis. Over 14 major league seasons, Rajay played for eight different clubs, including Cleveland's American League pennant winners in 2016. He's gonna take us into his closet and through his career in this edition of A Stitch in Time. Hey guys, you know, I've, I've played with eight different major league clubs. That means a whole lot of different uniforms. You know, I have a closet full of them. Bring some out, share with you uh, some of the, the memories that I have with them and some of the thoughts I have about these uniforms. Here we go, Oakland A's jersey. This was one of my first Oakland A's jersey that I ever wore. How do I know? It's number 38. My number, okay, was number 11. Okay, that's the number I, I, I wanted. The closest I could get to number 11, at that time, I was a rookie now, I was 38. Now, this is a heavier jersey. If you ever played in Oakland, you know that it gets cold at them night games. The highlight of the yellow and the white. See, we wore white cleats, you know what? So it kind of makes the, the, the letters pop 
pop a little bit more, okay? When them letters popping, you know you popping and, and, and dropping and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, because you got to cuddle and coordinate. It, it reminds me of my rookie year. It reminds me of playing with Mike Sweeney. Mike Sweeney was one of the first guys I met. He comes up to me, he introduces himself. He said, hey man, we're here to win. And that was like my introduction to Oakland. Okay, we're here to win. We had one of the youngest teams out there, but he was one of our leaders. He was great with that. And I just thank him for that. Okay, let's talk about the old English D. The old English D. I couldn't draw this if you, you paid me $1,000 to draw it. I'm sure I could trace it, but that is just unique in itself, right? June 30th, 2014. Man, what happened? What we down three, bottom of the night. What happened? Rajay Davis shows up, huh? Bases loaded against Oakland A. Sean Doolittle on the mound. It's one old count. He hangs a, a breaking ball. Rajay hits it down the left field. It could go, go, go. One off grand slam. Do you remember that Detroit? Let's talk about it. Hmm? If you remember, let's talk about that. All right. Okay, here we go. This is a classic road jersey for Boston. This is the first uniform I put on when I came to Boston. For, for one, Boston, I mean, it's classic. Like, I grew up in the Northeast, so that was one team that I could always watch, right? And they had the same jersey back then. <laughs> oh, it looked like the same, but this one is actually a little lighter. Right? But when you see those two socks together, that's one thing I know I had to do. When I put that jersey on, I had to make sure I had my red socks high, okay? My two red socks, because you know, there's two here. This was definitely a classic jersey of mine. All right, here we go. Now, there's so much history right here. And when I put it on, and it's so light. It just feels just, just, just right. It feels just right. I mean, look at this. It got the city on it. When I was seven years old, my uncle takes me where? To Shea Stadium. That's the first game I ever went to, first major league stadium that I've ever been to, Shea Stadium. And guess who's up the bat who hits a home run? Daryl Strawberry hits a home run and I become a fan for life. That was my dream to, to be able to play for the New York Mets. You guys see the pictures? I can't help but tell you about what this jersey means to me. The alternate jersey, the blue, blue is my color. It goes really nice with that red accent. Just to have the patch, World Series patch, when I put it on, I knew, I knew it was game time. Obviously, the most memorable moment was game seven. Bottom of the eight, you know, down by two. And I'm, and I'm walking up to the bat, and I'm feeling good about myself, right? The way I look, right? I got, got my, my cleats on, you know? Uh, I got my jersey on. I got I got my 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 Mims bands on that that uh, that got my face on it. It got my picture of my face on it. And on the on the band it says I can do all things. Right. Um, it's a scripture that would that I that I would tell myself when the moments got really um, pressure packed. We got a chance to tie the game. We got a chance to. Um, do something really special. The only one problem here, they got a Royce Chapman on the mound. He's doing a hunting. I didn't know where the ball was going, but I have to make contact with this ball. And I put myself in the best position to make contact with this ball. And once you, I hear that, and the ball just rising, rising, rising. And you hear the crowd going, <sighs> you feel the energy just getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. It's like, oh my, this is something special. This is special. I don't really know that it hit 
off the cameraman and bounced. I just thought it like hit off the top of the, you know, the wall. It might have bounced back in. So I'm, I'm running as hard as I can to get to second base. I'm like, cause I don't know. And then I look at the first base coach. He throws his hands up. <sighs> He's looking at the ball. I'm looking at him. He's looking at the ball. I'm looking at him. And I'm like, oh yeah. We did this thing, so I had to pump my chest a couple of times. Thank the Lord for my, just being putting me in that situation, <laughs> coming through. I'm like, man, this is exciting. Who's this guy? Let me touch myself. Let me just, is this me? This feel like a dream come true. This is amazing. This is like a fantasy. It was just a moment that is just irreplaceable. Uh, and, and coming around the bases when you see your, your your teammates so happy and they're out of the dugout and they're celebrating that's what makes it that much more special because you came through for your teammates hey guys i had fun reliving my career highlights i hope you did too thanks for sharing a stitch in time with me from the red carpet to the white lines, the Midsummer Classic has become as spectacular a showcase for baseball's best action as it is for baseball's best fashion. And this year was no exception as the 2023 All-Stars debuted Nike's latest uniform innovation, all wrapped up in a design that pays tribute to Seattle's natural beauty. Michael, you have put on the All-Star jersey, and this is the new technology that Nike is debuting here at All-Star Game. Talk to me about how it feels. Yeah, honestly, it's impressive. How are you feeling in this jersey? Very breathable, very lightweight, you know, <laughs> and ready I'm, to roll. I'm ready to perform. It feels more fit on your body and how light it is. It definitely feels a lot thinner than like the jerseys we usually wear. Great and super comfy. I definitely feel faster in it. Lightweight, uh, the pants are really nice, they're super thin. Feels great, it's yeah. comfortable. Yeah, great fit. Oh, it looks good on everybody, feels good. We did a really good job. Yeah, I'm excited to wear them. I think it's like kind of like the NBA type of jerseys. Ooh. You know, so it's, it's, it's cool, it's cool, yeah. It definitely gives uh, the Pacific Northwest vibes for sure. So I think, I think they did a good job with that. Do you feel the difference between this jersey and your regular game day jersey? I actually do. I'm a guy that I sweat a lot. Like usually when I'm pitching, like I have to change my jerseys twice, sometimes three times, like really? take one off, throw it in the dryer. I'm, oh, I'm sweating right now, but I can feel the jersey being a little more breathable. Wow. I have like, I have this like lightweight feeling to it, and it's like really, really comfortable. I feel like it fits in with Seattle, the, the colors and everything. It's uh, no complaints here. You have the pre-wrap that matches. Is this pre-planned? Did you already know? Oh yeah, you got to match. Yeah. You got to match. <laughs> got to go to the wrist tape. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm big on matching, so uh, can't, can't throw it off. How has it felt being able to get your arm loose in this jersey? Do you feel loose? Do you feel breathable? Yeah, yeah, you want it to be able to stretch a little bit, and it does stretch. You want it to be able to, you know, be soft. I mean, like I said, it feels great. Yeah. It's the right fit. What's your favorite part about it? Um, honestly, I think just like the color. Uh, I like it. It's like a... Yeah. Matches yeah. your eyes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they're comfy. Yeah? They're comfy, I got the LA logo. I don't know, these are sick. Do they feel? <laughs> sick pants. I like this patch. Um, the patch is pretty cool. I like the full logo and the design. I, I, I like the compass. Yeah? I think the compass with the MLB logo has to be my favorite thing in the uniform. That was the first thing I noticed, and like, I, ever since I, I, wore, I put it on, I'm like, that's just, that's just like a unique touch to it. What would you say is the importance of having a lightweight jersey in order to help you perform better on the field? I think just the, the less that you can think about what you're doing in general, um, it just helps free up your mind and kind of allows you to go into that uh, flow state and, and just, you know, not, not think and just do. When you think about lighter, being able to play, how does that impact your performance? Well, I think it's just, you know, for me, that's just, uh, I'm a slow guy. Uh, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so light cleats, light jersey, light <laughs> everything is better for me, so. Uh, Maybe this will help me steal a couple more bags. I feel like it will. When I put it on the first time, it feels lighter. You know, I'm like, it's <laughs> kind of like, is this the game jersey we're gonna wear? And, but like you say, it feels great. It feels great, it feels breathable. How would you say this feels on you, being able to play today, throwing and getting ready for the game? It feels good, comfy, it's light, obviously. But uh, yeah, no, it's nice. When you go to like hot place in the summer, mm -hmm. you have jerseys like this, it's gonna be, very helpful. This jersey, this uniform, everything is? Lightweight, breathable, and perform better. You kidding me? 
when Nike's new technology looks good on you, it feels good, so you're getting ready to go play good? Yep. Let's awesome. Do it. Awesome. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank you. Starting next season, every major league uniform, including home, road, alternate, and city connect, will be made using Nike's Vapor Premier technology. But if you can't wait until 2024, scan the QR code on the screen now to get your hands on these high-tech all-star jerseys. Partnerships between Major League Baseball and athletic apparel companies like Nike are nothing new. But what about collabs between baseball and upscale fashion brands? We went to Nordstrom's flagship store in Seattle to see what's popping at a chic all-star pop-up activation. So we are here at Nordstrom Seattle celebrating our 47 MLB Dia Stars Monday collab. We have hats, uh, apparel, t-shirts, sweatshirts, shorts, uh, live chain stitching, food from uh, my personal chef, uh, Chef Redbeard. I've known Davin for um, almost a decade now. We were both come from kind of that streetwear sneaker culture. And he reached out and said, hey, I think this is a really good opportunity for Diet Starts Monday and 47 to connect um, on a Major League Baseball program. 47's known for their vintage looks, uh, their worn looks, things like that. But for this look, we really wanted to do something that was a little bit more streetwear, had a little bit more of a saturated look to it. So there's a lot of things that are very unique to Diet Starts Monday. Everything comes from like a really authentic standpoint. Um, I wanted all of the clothing to feel like this is Mariner stuff that Griffey was wearing in the, in the 90s or the Braves hat that Dave Justice was wearing. Like I, I grew up idolizing those guys. So it comes from a very nostalgic place. Like everything's made to feel like it's from the 90s. So. I think just the hard work that we put into it, it, it really shows. When you talk about 90s baseball, you talk about the Mariners of the 90s, of course, um, and there's a few pieces of, of history that are in there. So the hat that I'm wearing uh, is, is the San Bernardino Spirit. Uh, it's that star with the uh, with the S on it that King Griffey Jr. wore uh, in the minor leagues. And then we also have just the vintage S looks and then that nautical S that they're known for now. Just being here at All-Star Weekend is just an incredible experience. My first time in Seattle, um, so to be able to bring again this collaboration here to Seattle, um, the home of the Mariners and uh, in Nordstrom is just a really a, a really great partnership. We're, we're really happy to be here. Uh, we were literally in the factory making this like two days ago. So the fact that it's here on the floor with the camera crew and everything, it's, it's unreal. This collaboration uh, between Diet Starts Monday and 47 and Major League Baseball uh, was just a monumental effort and we're so excited to be here in Seattle. This is something that is going to happen from this All-Star, next All-Star, we're planning on doing this for a while, so uh, should be should be a lot more to come from us. Did you see our resident fashionistas, Greg Amzinger and Hale Reynolds at the MLB All-Star Red Carpet Show? Okay, fellas, game recognizes game. As for the most stylish player in the league, it's a debate that's tailor-made for the folks from off base. So let's see who looms largest in this tale of the tape. What's going on, everyone? It's your girl LG Red alongside Cliff Floyd and Xavier Scruggs. You guys know that we love to talk about fashion and style on off base. Yeah. So let's get to the latest edition of Tale of the Tape. Today, we're looking at two of the most stylish players in baseball, Mookie Betts and Ronald Acuna Jr. Now, Mookie is a seven-time All-Star and six-time Gold Glove Award winner, while Acuna, well, he's a four-time All-Star and two-time Silver Slugger winner. So, Cliff, we're going to start with you. Who <clears throat> is the most stylish? Stylish player in the game to you. It's Mookie Best, no Hands doubt. Hands down. Hands down. <laughs> and you know why? I, I think this. If you take time to put everything together, you go out there, you spend the money for your stylist. Mm. Because most of us, black, brown, blue, right? We, we're simple. Mookie, he goes on a limb. And he's going to bring it. He's going And he wants to look good. He wants to be the best. He puts things together. You watch him on the red carpets. You watch him do all the, you know, his, his, his stuff he's doing on the side, his podcast. He just has flavor. He has style. He has, he does. He has that want to be the best looking dude in the room, you know, attitude. And uh, it shows 
and everything he rocks. Not not only that, look at him in the field. He can play second. <laughs> he can play short. He can bowl 300s. He can golf. Like, he's a stud. He's an what athlete. What can't the guy right? do? There's His a lot of things. a little understated. Yeah, well, I just can't do all the things he do on the field. And I'm not definitely doing what, what he's doing <laughs> off the field. And my pocket is a little thin based on going to be a stylist. So it's Mookie. I now. think anybody's pockets are thin compared, <laughs> compared to, to Mookie. Mookie does. Most people, right? <laughs> yes. I, I got to go with Ronald Acuna Jr. I, I, I think the one thing for me is like the accessories that he puts along with everything, yeah. right? Whether he matches, he, he's mixing in maybe the smallest simple color of the yellow all the time with his jersey. I love that factor, but I also love, you know, he has to rock all the protective gear so he can show the extra colors. He don't have no and elbow I, issues. I know, I mean, he might not even have any problems with the arm or the leg or nothing like that, but then. It's an accessory. But also like he's always showing it off athletically too, right? One of the most athletic players we have in our game, five tool players just like my man Mookie Betts uh, but the way he puts it all together on and off the field one of those guys that so flashy like yeah, and we man. get to see it like he wants to put it that in red our carpet face. outfit in Seattle yeah he's like Fire, you're right? gonna get recognize that yeah. I am that guy I exactly. am him right? Yeah. right he owns Sick. it and then he backs it up both players I'll be a very stylish yeah. so we can call this one a tie we thank <laughs> you so much for watching another edition Both of a tripping. tale of the tape for the off base crew I'm LG red we'll see you next time it's a tie I'm AJ Andrews and that'll wrap up our inside stitch episode about customization and the midsummer classic but don't get it twisted Ken Griffey Jr. wasn't the only all-star to rock his headwear backwards. Just check out this classic fit from 1997. Full tip of the cap, and now here we go. He gets Larry Walker, and here he is. He's going to face him right in, and why not? He looks like a catcher hitting. And now he's back to the left side, and... And a two-out walk, so Walker reaches base after that first pitch. It was like the flyby here right after the anthem.